Hey there viewers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. So as you can tell by the title of the video we're going to talk about that annoying rattle in the front end uh, and what typically will cause it. Now we're only going to talk about one specific part here that is a very very common part on you know multiple types of vehicles that I see come in the shop and it's usually you know the customer bringing in and say hey I got this you know I got this horrible rattle in the front of my car I don't even dare drive it you know in some cases um, and you'll notice too uh, you know a lot of times customers that are really observant will tell me that when they hit a bump let's say just like a little divot in the road I'm not talking you know a huge pothole but they hit a you know a little change in the road uh, a little bit of fluctuation they get a tunk tunk you know this little little clunk and that's typically when it hit it with just one wheel or the other and I'm going to explain to you uh, you know what I typically find what we see of course a lot of you already know where we're going with this and I'll uh, let the cat out of the bag per se or the sway bar link so sway bar links are a big time common noise maker on the front of cars and it's something I would think that maybe as a rookie uh, or somebody who you know doesn't work on cars every day might overlook this but this little guy right here can make a tremendous amount of noise uh, particularly this style with like the ball and socket you know like a, you know it looks like a little tie rod end or a ball joint it's got the um, I don't even know what the you know proper name would be but I call it you know like a ball and socket type sway bar link now some sway bar links are just round and have you know rubber bushings or they look like a long bolt that has bushings on each end those typically don't clunk uh, or rattle until the bushings get you know super hard or one breaks and you'll hear it snap and pass the sway bar but uh, this is quite common like I said many different makes and models got a perfect example here we got this Ford Escape this is the one we just put the engine in lady wanted some other things done so I've done the brakes and they also said that you know be sure to check my struts because they got this horrible rattle in the front end and you know can't seem to find it they had it in another shop whatever so I'm going to show you, we're going to check these sway bar links and there's a couple things you got to do when you check them. And I guess I'll tell you that right now is first of all, if you're just jacking up one side of the car, you're just jacking up one wheel, they're typically always going to feel tight. And that is because uh, the sway bar link here obviously is hooked to the sway bar or the anti-roll bar. Its purpose is to keep that body roll down like coming into a corner. Um, so that, that sway bar being hooked to the other wheel, if you only jack up one wheel, it's going to put that really harsh tension on it, really uneven tension. So when you go to check it, you know, it's going to feel, it's going to feel tight unless it's like, you know, ready to break. Uh, so typically what I'll do is I'll do them either hanging on the lift. So, you know, both wheels are going to be evenly, you know, down or the best method to check these actually, if you can get to them is on the ground when they're in their actual ride position, because sometimes even putting them on the lift, uh, it can put a little bit of downward force on them. It puts the sway bar in a different position in the sway bar bushings and can put a little torque on them so it might go overlooked. Uh, I'm going to show you the amount of play that these have and it's kind of sometimes it's kind of hard to believe. You know, you check them and you're like, man, it's just barely loose. But I tell you what, you take it for a ride and you hit them little uneven bumps in the road and it'll rattle you out of the cab. It sounds terrible. So they always sound worse than they are. But uh, I guess all that to say, if you do have a rattle, Check your sway bar links first and uh, maybe get lucky. So over here on the passenger side, this is the bottom of the sway bar link. This is obviously the sway bar. So we'll just take it and we'll have to see if we can pull down or push up on this one. Push up. So you hear that little bit of knocking. And there's just that little bit of movement in this lower joint. that's all it really takes like I say it sounds silly but uh, this will make a tremendous amount of noise now if we set the car down and got this tension if there's obviously some tension on this sway bar uh, the noise would be a little little more prevalent I mean you would you would hear it a little better but that's all it takes folks get you a little closer there so you can see this it's just that little bit of movement makes a super annoying clunk so over here on the driver's side, now I got the wheel straight, so there's a different type of tension on this. But you can see the movement there. Of course, the air compressor always kicks on at the wrong time. Gonna have to get rid of that air compressor if it keeps interrupting. Can't really hear that there, but watch this. We take a hammer handle, stick it on there, and then we'll just tap on the top of the hammer. And that's that noise there is usually what translates inside the car. Uh, so the upper joint there can get loose also. 
grab that whole link, see if we can see that. A little bit of movement right there, but it's always easier to check at the bar end. Whoa! Something else to be mindful of, which uh, isn't our case here, is the actual sway bar bar bushing, so the bar to frame bushings. Now these are easiest to check on the ground. Uh, you get under there, and this really plagues like Dodge Caravans, and that usually makes a different type of noise. This will usually be more like a hollow thud. It'll sound like somebody's kind of like beating right on the floor of your car. Um, so you set the car down, and you have to get under there so you can actually grab the bars, stick a pry bar in here, and see if there's any movement. A lot of times these bushings will get super hard, and uh, I want to say they egg out, but they just you know they just kind of wear out where the where the bar goes through, and I actually give the bar uh, some movement in there. And every time you hit a bump, you know that if the sway bar links are tight, the bar will come up and just kind of thump in those bushings. But that's more of like a hollow thud type sound. So that's pretty much it, folks. I don't really, this is the first like generalized video I've ever done. Long winded intro, whatnot. Probably most people know this, but anyhow, we're going to get in. And I feel that I owe it to you to change the sway bar links. Uh, typically, they're pretty easy. Now, sometimes in New York, they suck. So I take them off of the torch. Um, they can be a real pain in the neck. So in the factory one here, there's a spot where you hold it with an Allen key, you know, in the perfect world, you know, it'd be right in the middle of that stud and then you take off the nut and same thing on the bottom on the bar, but more often than not, it's just one big clumpy mess of rust. Uh, these here, the aftermarket ones actually have a flat on the inside so you can stick a wrench here, socket on the outside and zip them off. I believe the factory ones have a flat they also look like they have a flat, so we'll spray them down with some Panther P. We'll get them out of there. Now, in some cases, too, depending on the vehicle, they are specific left to right. Now, in this case, I don't believe they are. We got the same part number. Uh, these ones have grease fittings. These are some Moogs. Uh, I've used these. Had pretty good success with them, especially since they've changed the design of their uh, rubber boot and made it more of a integrated rubber boot instead of the uh, external cup, which always seemed to get dirt and junk in it. But in my experience, you got a bad sway bar link, whether it's on a Ford or a Dodge or GM or some Jap car or Euro Trash, they always make the same noise, high-pitched, sharp, clunky, rattly noise. Now, uh, if you have that noise in your car, is it your sway bar links? Maybe. Uh, can it be something else? Absolutely. But first and foremost, check your sway bar links. You know, whether you got to get in there with a little bar, wiggle them, any movement in them, you'd be really surprised how that little movement makes such a horrendous noise in the car. And I remember as a young buck technician, mechanic, way back in the day, I used to occasionally, you know, is that coming from the sway bar links, sway bar bushings? I used to just take it off, take the sway bar links off, take the car for a little toot, see if my noise went away and kind of help isolate, you know, do we have sway bar link and strut noise or, you know, ball joints or some other bushing, you know, so that's what I used to do. I don't recommend that though, because probably some liability type reason. I shouldn't say that stuff. So before we begin, we'll give her a little toot with some Panther P. I'll go hit the other side. All right, these do have the flat on the inside, 17 mil wrench on these. Whoa, that came off way too easy, fella. So typically they'll come off kind of hard. Maybe it's because we put a little Panther P on it. So you can feel a little play in that. Well, you can't, but I can. So you have to take my word for it. You can hear the noise. Let's go and hook the other side. And then what I find is easiest, unhook both sides, and you can kind of tip that sway bar up, get behind here with an air ratchet, and zip them off. All zippy zap. All right, that side is off. Let's see if we move the whole shebang now. We will get back here, right where you guys can't see it, and take the other nut off. We're going to want a 14 short, Miss Hannah. Today's Miss Hannah's last day, folks. Sad, sad day at SMA. Right, Hannah? Right. Exactly. Sound a little more empathetic, will you? I don't know if that's the right word. Nothing. You're not going to say anything. Remain behind the scenes for your last day. Mm -hmm. Holy crap! Come on. Get on there, little fella. This thing's a little too wild, Hannah. Oh, damn you, did you get this to me in the wrong direction? 
Really? Yes, you did. I Every time. Do. Every freaking time, Anna. You're gonna be a nurse, right? Right. Jeez. All right, now that we've got that under control. So with the aftermarket ones, there's grease fittings on them. So I have seen in my experience where somebody has put these on wrong, not saying it was me, but I've seen it come in where the grease fitting here. So sometimes these will come depending on the application of a straight fitting or they'll have like a 90 degree. And it's always my habit to face it away from the axle shaft because I've seen it before uh, come in where the grease fitting, let's say we put this one on the bottom, is facing the drive axle and in this position it's happy it doesn't touch the axle but when you set it down and everything goes back to its rest position now all of a sudden your grease fittings rubbing on the axle and you got another noise that you didn't have prior so long story short in this application we'll face the grease fitting away from the axle and we'll fit them just like we took them off We'll start with the bottom side, we'll tighten this one up, we'll do the bottom side on the other side, come back, slip the top in, boom, we'll be done. Hannah always hands me the air ratchet or any air tool in the wrong direction, every time. I do it on purpose. I know you do. What are you going to do when you're handing the doctor, like, whatever nurses hand doctors? Yeah. You got people's lives in your hand, Hannah. You don't do it on purpose? Now, this, here comes the confession. I hope you have guilt. I don't like you sleep at night. All right, so on a pillow, is that what you said? <laughs> I said, I don't even know how you sleep at night. Easily. Easily, probably. All right, so we're going to go pop on the other side. We'll come back over here. So that side is done and in. Now sometimes these aftermarket ones have a little longer studs. So you might have to turn the wheel a little bit. Get them all up in there. We'll stick the new nut on. Like so. Torque at the factory spec. Which is two Uggadugas with the Earthquake, which is still rocking strong. I can't believe it. Harbor Freight for the win. Uh, I'll go tighten down the other side, give her a little two degrees. Well, let me grab one of these old ones here. So here's the old sway bar links. Now these ones are made out of aluminum, as they say. And you can probably see the movement in that joint. Hard to believe that makes such an obnoxious noise in your vehicle. Of course, that one doesn't feel like it has any play in it. Can you hear it? No, you can't. Oh, actually, it's just raining outside. Raining. Sorry, I thought the sway bar link, I could hear the ocean. Must be felt guilty about handing me that ratchet backwards. You mentioned you needed it. Oh. So we're going to give these a little two degrees. Now, don't overdo it and explode that boot. Because that wouldn't be uh, very helpful. Ugh. Couple, two, three pumps, boom. I have no idea. Yes. The people probably want to say goodbye to you. But they can't say goodbye to they me can. because they won't I'm on the other side and I'm not going to get it because I won't be here. They'll be in the comment section. Anyhow, folks, that is locating the most common front end rattle uh, that I see in my experience. Now, I don't know if that's scientifically proven to be the most common rattle on the front of cars, but it is certainly common. And that's how to identify it and then repair it. Some are harder than others. Uh, I'll say that. Uh, some are easier. These were pretty easy. No torch required. And that's it. Do you have anything to add, Anna, on your last day? Any last words? Nothing? Nothing. Should we reveal your true identity as to who you are, whether you're my daughter or nope. sister or cousin? Or... Nope. Well, folks, you may never know. Uh, and we'll leave it at that. So while you're pondering that thought, click the subscribe button. Find us on our socials. Also, you can find us on Patreon. Uh, if you want to support us and love what we do, and just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.